So hi, I'm just going to talk about this little gem of a book, Greg Bear, Beyond Heaven's River. I found it while riffling through a pile of books in Bibliopolis in Avenue Louise here in Brussels. Now this story is um, very, very bare bones. It's only 256 pages long and the, the writing on the inside is actually quite big. Um, and in it, he describes a universe only to the point where it's necessary to move the story along. It's a very, very much left to the imagination what the rest of the universe is like. So the only real detail comes in uh, description of the central character's emotional conflict. He's a um, Japanese pilot from World War II, uh, Battle of Midway, they've lost, the ship is sinking. He's given the opportunity to commit ritual suicide by his captain, doesn't do it, regrets it, boom, then finds himself taken away to some part of the universe by a powerful alien uh, group. We don't know who they are. Um, he spends some time there under their power in an android mediated samurai world where he gets the impression people are listening to him, giving him more that he needs, creating his own Japanese history. And then all of a sudden, these aliens disappear and he's left found in the middle of a, a human based galactic civilization of data gathering big business. Um, and from that point on, the story focuses on um, human jealousy, love in expected places, cultural conflict, cultural isolation, uh, and the post personal emotional conflicts of someone who's been moved twice from one kind of culture to another and then into a further one. It's got elements of Greek tragedy and it's sparse narrative style means you can read it very, very quickly. I recommend that, Greg Bear. Now what um, got me uh, thinking was at the beginning of the book, I'm always looking at these things, he makes a dedication to somebody here. Well, his father and mother, first of all, Dean and Wilma Bear. But then on the literary side, he quotes, this book is for Joseph Conrad. You may know Joseph Conrad, author of Heart of Darkness, Nostromo, a mind who looks at the dark side of human nature. Again, cultural alienation. But the name which um, struck me as odd was Lafcadia Hearn. Never heard of the name. And of course, that leads you on to the internet to find out why would he dedicate this book to a guy called Lafcadia Hearn. So you can see there on the screen, uh, I've picked up something there, the Paris Review, the many lies of Lafcadia Hearn. And it turns out that this particular gentleman, uh, there he is, um, He's actually um, born to a Greek mother and an Irish father who was a surgeon in the British Army uh, in the middle of the 19th century. His story is quite incredible. It goes through a whole range of being dumped by his dad, dumped by his mum, moved to London, moved to um, Ireland, Dublin, moved to Cincinnati in the USA, moved to New Orleans. And in the end, he finds himself in Japan where he has become part of a, a Japanese culture. He is now remembered for his ability to tell stories about Japanese culture, Buddhist culture, Japanese folk tales. And he wrote excellent stories for newspapers and books about what it was like to be in Japan in the late 1800s, so the 1880s, uh, 1890s. Uh, and he wrote several books um, which are taken to be the West's view of what it was like to be in Japan. Uh, at the end of the 1890s, Japan was very much a samurai, a bamboo and bushido type culture, very much closed and exotic as far as the Western world was concerned. Uh, you see here in the picture, He's turned away in profile because when he was a young lad in England, someone actually poked his eye out. So he never liked people to see that. So some very good sources there about what he actually was. He eventually named himself, here you see it, Koizumi Yakumo. Uh, and he was there to witness his change over from the feudal society to a modern industrial nation uh, at the beginning of the 20th century. 
So his story is told well in various places. This particular one from the Paris Review is worth taking a read of. And there you go. That's why his whole thing about Japanese culture is why the central character here is a Japanese um, sub-lieutenant from World War II. And in the story, his own personal internal conflict is told through occasional tales uh, based on Japanese culture. So a good book, well worth the read. And as always, when you read a book and you go to it, you find out lots of other things about um, the world uh, and the way that it works. In this case, I've learned about a guy called Lafcadio Hearn, somewhere I'd never heard of. So there you go. That's what I want to say. I'll see you in the next video.